so first of all I'm going to use this Laura Mercier foundation primer just to add a bit of hydration to my skin because it can be quite dry if I don't use a moisturizing primer um, I just normally just apply primers with my hand to be honest just kind of seems the most convenient way to do So then I'm going to take my Browsings by Benefit, which is like my all-time favourite brow product. And I just use it with a Stiller um, angled brow brush, which is really good because it's really dense and thick. Um, it doesn't really move and it always um, maintains its shape. So it's really good to get nice, solid lines with. Um, and you can really just build up the product. The wax, I mix the wax and the powder together. Um, some people say you should put the wax over the top to set it, but I just normally mix them together. Um, and I kind of just focus on the middle of the brow. I don't really do much product in the front of the brow because I think that can make it look harsh. And I just work on the end really and just make it look a little bit more straight because I kind of prefer straighter brows rather than really harsh um, angled brows because I think my face is kind of harsh already. Um, so I like to soften it with, you know, softer brows, I guess, or more straight brows. So I'm just going to do that now. Then I'm going to take this MAC Studio Fix uh, concealer in NW25, I believe, and I'm just going to use it um, just to define under the eye and make it look a lot more clean-like. Clean this is good if you're doing quite a colourful eye look because it kind of exaggerates uh, the eye shape and it just makes everything look more polished. I wouldn't really do this every day, to be honest. Um, it can be quite time consuming and sometimes it can look a bit over the top so you kind of have to be careful not to do it too much. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the look where people do it on the top. Um, you know where they put the concealer on the top, I think that can look too drawn on but just a bit under the eye can brighten everything up and be a good base for a colourful eye look. And I'm just applying this with, um, I think it's 231 brush, it's really good. Um, then I'm just brushing the brows out. You can use a disposable mascara wand, whatever you like. And then I'm going to prime my lids with this mini uh, sample of um, Urban Decay's Primer Potion in the original. I haven't used this for like years now. Um, but I, it's like an old time favourite. I really do like it. Just apply it with my fingers once again. Fingers are the best tool. So then I'm going to take this Stiller foundation. This is the natural finish foundation. It kind of mattifies the skin. So if you've got oily skin, this would be good. It's oil free as well. Um, and it just has the perfect colour. Um, it is a really good colour for my skin. It's shade B. And it's just a really nice uh, foundation. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't have a pump. I'm just taking my Beauty Blend dupe. Um, I can't remember where this is from. I think it's from Superdrug. Um, just dampen the sponge and just sort of blot and roll the product on it just gives a nice even um seamless finish i guess when you do this Then I'm taking this Trish McAvoy Correct and Brighten sort of concealer. It reminds me a lot of the um, MAC um, highlighting pens, you know, the um, one in Light Boost. This is a tiny bit too yellow for me, to be honest. This would be great on medium skin tones. I just wanted to try it out, but it didn't work out that well. It was kind of a bit too yellow. So I did, in the end, go over it with a lighter one. But this is really good if you're looking for a dupe for that. It's probably more expensive, to be honest, but... It's very, very similar in the application and the formula. So yeah, I'm kind of just highlighting and brightening areas. It's not really for coverage. It's just to brighten the areas that I want to highlight. And then if you want, you can just go over with um, a blending sponge again. Just gives a really nice natural finish and blends it all together seamless seamlessly. I actually really like doing this, to be honest, because it's kind of fun. It's a lot more interesting than using a brush. So I'm just blending away, blend, blend, blend. And then I realised that it does look a little bit yellow when I look in the mirror after this, but I edited it out. But anyway, it does look a tiny, tiny bit yellow for my skin when I'm not tanned. Literally, I don't have any self-tan on. So I take this lighter one. This one's by uh, Sleek. It's called Lumia. And it's the same concept. Um, 
it's very light. It's I think it, the colour is called light. And I just go over the um, over the concealer just to make it look less yellow, and just brighten it up really. Then I'm taking this Tree Match powder by L'Oreal, which L'Oreal do amazing powders and foundations. The the um, I think it's the Lumiere, and the Tree Match is really good as well. The foundation, and I was recommended this by Michelle Fan. Um, most of her recommendations you can trust, but um, you do have to be careful what you buy from her, because um, I guess most of her reviews or whatever are sponsored. So. You know, uh, then I'm taking this Benefit little um, duo palette, I guess, and it has the blushes. I think it has uh, Coralista, and I don't really know which ones it has, but I'm using a mix of the Coralista and the pink one, which I'm not really sure what it's called, but I will list it below. Um, so I'm just applying it with a Sigma, Sigma brush. And to be honest with blushes, I don't like to apply them just on the apple of the cheek. I like to go a bit in the cheekbone as well, just to accentuate that area. Then I'm taking this Revlon palette, the whole reason I'm making this video, and I'm taking the light sand colour with kind of like a 217 brush, but it's not 217, it's a Belladium Tools brush. And I'm applying it um, in the crease, but not too defined. It just gives a nice wash of colour, um, and it makes a good transition colour as well just warms everything up and blends everything together so I like to apply the sort of browns or neutral colours first and on the other eye as well on normal days I normally just wear this on its own literally and I'll just put a bit of mascara on but for today it looks like really nice to blend all the bright colours in together So then I'm going to take the Bright Vivid Blue with a 217 brush and I'm going to concentrate the colour on the inner lid um, section and you yeah, do have to build this colour up and also be careful that you don't have a lot of fallout because you can get some fallout because obviously the product's really pigmented. Um, so I'm sort of just focusing on the inner corners, the tear duct and a tiny bit under the eye, like the four, first quarter of the under eye that I'm concentrating on. kind of want it to be just like a pop of colour. Also, when you do your eye makeup as well, it's important, even though sometimes you look down, it's important to look up as well, just to see how it looks when your eyes are open. Then I'm taking the similar brush, it's a pencil brush, and I'm taking the black colour, the, the grey colour, and I'm just literally going to define the crease. Um, be very be very careful where you place this product, though. Even though we're going to blend it out afterwards, you have to make sure you're putting it in the putting it in the right area. So I'm literally just putting on the actual crease. So when I open my eyes, it just looks like a shadow. I'm blending it all the way around my crease, not just the outer third. Um, literally all of it. Just picking up product as you go, just to make sure it's super pigmented. And then I'm going to round it out at the outside eye. So I'm sort of going into the eye shape, rounding it out. And then I take a little bit underneath the eye as well. And the same on the other eye as well. You just really need to find out, find, you know, where your socket is, of your eye is. You can feel it um, when you put your makeup brush there. See, I'm just taking the black underneath the eye. But once again, be careful because, you know, you don't want to make a total mess and have to do your foundation again. And 
Then I'm taking this dirty blending brush, which had the brown on, and I'm blending out the black now. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's got the lighter colour on, I just advise using clean brushes to blend, but in this case I was running out of brushes, so yeah, just blending the black here. As you can see, it goes into like kind of like a um, sort of grey blue, um, grey colour when you blend it out, so it really does soften it just again under the eye as well with the same brush you also want to make sure you keep that rounded um, edge on the corner as well even when you're blending out so now I'm just reapplying the blue um, just to make sure the pigment is you know still really bright and it keeps to that true indigo bluish purple colour so it's really good to reapply the colours. Then I'm taking the lighter, like baby blue I'd call it, and I'm applying it on the outer lid. Um, I think it looks really nice next to the contrast of the black and the blue together. So now I've done both eyes, I'm going to take the black again because I want to build up the colour, I want it to look more intense. Um, so I'm reapplying it where I applied it first, just to intensify the contour of the eye and just to give a little bit more contrast um, between the light colours. Then you can just go over it and blend it out again. With makeup, I guess it's best to start off, you know, adding um, layers rather than just go on with really dark. Then you can build it up and it looks a lot more um, professional when you do that because all the colours are blended together and you can see the different transition of colours. Okay, now I'm just curling my eyelashes with Shirimura and applying some uh, eyelaw lashes, which look really nice. They're called Super Full. And now I'm taking the Stila Smudge Pot in co Cobalt. And I'm going to line the top of my eyes. And I kind of found it quite hard to film this, to be honest, because the camera didn't really want to stay where my makeup was being applied. But you get, yeah, I'm sure you know how to apply eyeliner, so that's fine. Then I'm taking Smolder by MAC and I'm just uh, tightlining the underneath of my eyes. Then I'm taking Clinique's Bottom Lash Mascara which is really good because it really doesn't smudge throughout the day. You know how you get some mascaras that kind of have a bit of fallout? Well this one doesn't and it's really cute to use and it's a tiny little brush as you can see. So now I'm lining my lips with um, Subculture by MAC, just a nice classic nude colour and my lips are kind of small so I like to outdraw, outdraw them a tiny tiny bit but nothing too crazy. Then I'm taking this new product by Clarins, well new to me anyway, it's called the Instant Lip Perfector and this is in the colour Nude and it's a really nice non-sticky um, conditioning lip gloss. It's actually one of the nicest ones I've ever used, it just feels really nice to use for every day, it doesn't feel overly sticky, it's not like one of those lip glosses that would like stick to your hair, which is really good actually. So yeah, definitely check that out if you're in a department store or you buy um, a Clarins counter. So yeah, that's the finished look. I hope you like it, guys. And yeah, don't forget to leave some comments below to tell me what you think. See you soon.